The first expansion for Daily Ops is going live with Update 26 and there is plenty to learn. Besides new locations, enemies and mutations, we are also getting a new mission. Here's everything you need to know to finish in Elder Mode. Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. I've been really busy working on the new Daily Ops guides since so many things are about to change and some of them will raise the difficulty and put up some great challenges. But before we get there, let me explain how the new Daily Ops mission Decryption works, what are the new objectives, what you need to do and how to do it. Of course, I will share my strategy and lots of tips to make things easier for you and to ensure you can always finish in Elder Mode as it's supposed to be and farm all the new rewards live with patch 26. There are 13 new rewards, so you probably don't want to skip daily ops altogether. There's even a new armor set, the Covert Scout. Well, with that being said, let's rock it, shall we? With the uplink mission, all you have to do is interact with the signal booster to uplinks and defend them from enemy waves. Then you need to kill a few more enemies and a boss, that's pretty much it. The concept is very straightforward, but now we are getting a second mission. In decryption, the objectives are very different. You need to kill dozens of enemies per objective. But now, they spawn scattered across the instance and they don't really run towards your position. Instead, they stand their ground and that means that after each elimination objective, you need to kill code carriers and only then you can disable radio interceptors. These new machines have a different model and sound. Unlike a plank, you can hear a sound like this when you are near a radio interceptor. There are two different sounds though. One is more like people talking in the background and the second sound is more like a dry beeping. I'm not sure if these sounds are part of the same alert or if they mean something different. Anyway, these new radios have different placements in the old locations and together with the new locations there are currently 7 different sequences to learn. I will go over this in another video. For now, keep in mind that using your compass is your best chance to quickly learn their locations inside an operation. After all, the compass displays mission objectives including this radio interceptors. Also, they are always placed on top of a table, not on walls, unlike it works with uplink. Anyway, after you disable two of the interceptors, you then need to kill a boss and disable the final radio to complete the mission. Decryption is not a complex mission, far from it, it's just different and it might take some time to get used to it. After all, you need to chase enemies, it's a bit strange, normally enemies are the ones chasing you, not the other way around. But yeah, all in all it's not a difficult mission, just different from everything we are used to in 76. Okay, so as I mentioned before, you should definitely use your compass to understand where do you need to go, at least what direction, and there's plenty of information you can get by just looking at your compass. You just need to know what it means first though. In daily ops, the compass doesn't only detect nearby enemies, it also marks the next objective. But first things first, when it comes to enemies, it's obviously the red dots are the enemies that are nearby but sometimes they have arrows. Well, that's the indication of height in comparison to you. If the arrow is above the dot, then it means the enemy is one level above your position, and if the arrow is below the enemy, it means the opposite, it's below you. Now, keep in mind that the compass only works for concrete or solid levels, not platforms. For example, at West Tech, the system doesn't even add any arrows when enemies are on the platforms above you or vice versa. It's quite annoying, but still good to know nonetheless. Anyhow, when you have a fixed objective, such as a code carrier or a radio to disable, the compass will show objective marks just like missions, so make sure to move towards them, it even shows the exact distance you are from them. Don't forget yellow targets equals friendly targets, aka your teammates, in daily operations at least. They can also have arrows, which indicates the same height information I explained before. Well, now that you know how to read your compass properly, let's proceed. 
The next tip I have for you is to always check the active objective because yes, you don't have to kill enemies very often, but sometimes the objective just changed and there is no use in killing any more enemies. In fact, if you need to kill a code carrier or disable a radio, then you should try your best not to kill any more normal enemies because first, you are not exactly working towards the objective anymore. Second, you are wasting time and third, you are wasting known resources it's not always easy to find new enemies, you know, you might have to run elsewhere to find new ones, aka like in the other side of the instance, and that's not very pleasant. So I highly recommend you to only kill what you need when you need it, apart from a few exceptional events, like if you are in danger, you should kill them to protect yourself, of course, or if they are in the way of an objective, you should also take them down in that case. Other than that, you should be patient and cooperative towards your mission if you want it to go as quickly as possible. The radio interceptors are a huge part of the decryption mission. There are always three per mission and they make a very distinct sound when you are nearby, as I revealed in the first point. If you missed it, here it is again. They have a few different sounds though for whatever reason. As I said before, I'm working on a complete guide with the exact locations for all the decryption radios, so stay tuned for more. For now, I can give you a few tips on how to quickly find them across the seven locations this mission can take place at. First of all, they are always placed on top of a table, and secondly, they are usually scattered in symmetrical positions, two in the extreme opposite sides of the instance, and one right in the middle, between the other two. That's what I found out after completing dozens of decryptions so far. I hope it helps you navigate and find them better on your own if you need to. Alright, now let's start with the best ways to counter the new mutations. In my view, the strongest and most dangerous one for players is the new Savage Strike. It's the locked mutation for decryption and it's deadly, especially in the hands of a few selected enemies like the cultists. In other words, enemies with the savage strike hurt a lot and they can kill you fairly easily too, depending on the race. Some faster than others, but what I'm trying to say is that you should take the threat seriously, especially because there is no real counter here. According to the data miners, this new mutation gives enemies 1.5 more damage, better accuracy and 99% armor penetration. Wow. It's like you're fighting them naked with no armor at all, so don't worry about what armor set you own and forget about power armor as well, it's not going to help. I tried, because you can only benefit from 1% of your total armor, basically. But then you may ask me, why were you using power armor in a huge part of this video, Marta? Why? Well, that's because at the time I was not aware of this. I had hopes power armor would help me survive a tiny bit longer, but it doesn't. It doesn't help. Hey, don't judge me. I had to start somewhere. We all have been beginners once. Anyway, the best strategy against Savage Strike is to play stealthy as Dodge recommends, take one enemy at a time, avoid getting surprised or backstabbed, stay away from multiple targets at once and always look for cover. A stealthy approach here makes things safer and faster, believe me or not, because if you rush, your chances to die are much higher and whenever you die, you lose way more time than if you play stealthy. Plus, enemies hold their positions, so you always have to track them down Therefore, stealthy is definitely the best strategy for decryption, especially if you are low on numbers. Now that you know how to deal with the lock mutation, let's check the toxic one. This effect triggers whenever you kill a toxic enemy. A green toxic cloud will emerge, doing lots of damage over time to nearby players. It's by far the strongest mutation among the four new ones, if you exclude the permanent Savage Strike, of course. As shown, you easily die from this toxic cloud in a matter of seconds. It's particularly dangerous for bloodied builds, since it doesn't give you a lot of time to react and heal. However, there is a very efficient counter for this mutation. The legendary perk Funky Dudes can completely nullify the toxic damage, 
And the best part is that you don't even need to max this perk to reach poison damage immunity. I'm dead serious. According to my tests, rank 2 makes you quite resilient, but it's only with rank 3 that you can become fully immune to the toxic damage. In other words, around 150 poison resistance is more than enough to deny the effects of the toxic mutation, but make sure to wear a matching armor set, otherwise it will not work. I know one legendary perk slot is a lot to ask for this single purpose, but if you intend to do daily ops every day for a while, this will be a lifesaver, so it might be worth the sacrifice until you're done with the operations until the next expansion. What about the Swift Mutation? It's another addition with patch 26 and I must say, I'm not impressed. This mutation unlocks about 25-40% to 40 movement speed, according to the data miner community. It's not a lot, but it's enough to be noticeable, if you know what I mean. Actually, in the game files, Bethesda is just multiplying the running animation, it seems like, so in the end it produces the same result. They run faster and as such, they can reach you faster and take you down faster too, <laughs> kinda obvious. Now for ranged targets this mutation is pretty much useless, but for melee enemies this is very very dangerous. Can you imagine a cricket or a mole rat moving about 40% faster than usual? Yeah, it's pretty scary and it can dictate if you live or die. So my best counter here is to simply keep moving and ensure you maintain a certain distance from all your targets. If enemies come too close, make sure to jump a lot to increase your chances to dodge their hits as much as possible, because if you don't, you can get easily surprised and I don't mean the good kind, sadly. So <laughs> keep that in mind. Now, because I don't like to discriminate, let me also address the regenerating mutation, which is by far the most useless one. There's really nothing to worry or counter here. Kill your enemies as per usual and that's it. I mean, they might heal a little bit if your weapons are slacking. They can only heal themselves if they're still alive and injured, right? So if you kill them in one or two hits, they don't even get a chance to use their mutation. It's pretty sad if you think about it. Anyway, if you use endgame gear, you shouldn't have any issues taking them down in a blink of an eye. Next, I want to share a tip that I've learned out of experience in these past weeks. Most players use a Bloodgate build and have no issues staying alive while playing with 20% HP or less. However, with this daily ops expansion, things are changing. Mm -hmm. The Savage Strike mutation allows enemies to hit much, much harder, and normally that means they can kill you in a few hits, sometimes just one. I'm dead serious. Most melee enemies are so OP. Crickets don't even need to attack. They look at you and you're already downed. Same for hounds and war dogs. As such, relying on luck and chance is not really a wise strategy, don't you think so? Many things could go wrong. I mean, it only takes one hit, one single hit and you die when you are below 20% HP pretty much. With this in mind, you should definitely not do decryption with low HP, it's way too much risk, which could naturally lead to frustration, anger, and ultimately it could mean failing the operation, at least in elder mode. I recommend you playing with at least 40-50% to 50 HP, just to be on the safe side. At least you get a little bit more time to react if something doesn't go as planned, you also don't need to feel stressed all the time and in danger from everything, and most importantly, you won't go down in one single hit from, let's say, a backstab. I'm not saying it's impossible to play properly with Bloodied here, I did a few runs with about 20% HP, like that and managed to stay alive. But that's because first I had a full team tanking for me, secondly I was really lucky and third I played paranoid style, always jumping around on top of things, sneaking, hiding and so on. It's very intense and stressful to play like that, so I don't exactly recommend you to do it. Now if you play Vanguard's full HP tank builds, then this point is obviously not for you, you are already on the safe side.
Another tip everyone should do while doing decryption is to carry lots, and I mean a lot of steam packs, because you will need to heal yourself very often, depending on how many people you are doing it with. If you are going to solo, then bring at least 20 to 30 per run, because yeah, you're gonna get hit by everything, there's no one else to tank for you. As I already showed you guys, the Savage Strike mutation makes enemies much stronger, and it's unlikely that you will come out of this unharmed. Plus, the final boss, depending on what it is, can normally do plenty of damage as well. I tend to use around 10 to 20 steam packs per operation in a 2 to 3 man team, just to give you guys an idea. And yes, I'm using defense or damage block perks like rank 3, ricochet, Syridan PT and dodgy. Doing decryption with no steam packs will get you killed often, and you really don't want that to happen because dying equals time wasted, which is halfway to do not finish under 8 minutes. So make sure you don't run out of steam packs, keep healing yourself, keep that HP as high as possible and keep killing until you're done. Another game-changing tip I have for you is to seek environmental cover in different ways. Besides hiding behind walls and objects to block ranged enemy hits, you can and should also stand on top of objects whenever possible. That's because you can easily deny melee damage this way. With the, with the new enemy additions, there are plenty of dangerous creatures out there looking for a chance to take you down. <coughs> Crickets, small rats, hounds, and so many others. However, if you stand on top of tall objects, they can't really hurt you. They will just stand there looking at you, staring at you, but they cannot hit you, so that's wonderful. Plus, it is highly effective against the toxic mutation too. Sometimes you can even block it if you stand above the cloud, depending on where the enemy died, strangely enough. I know not every location has great conditions to do this, but for example, in Vault 96, I already found some really good spots as shown here. At the mainframe, there are lots of terminals which can serve as melee barriers. And at the biome research quarters, there's this little corner behind the crates which also blocks melee enemies. If you have a bloodied build, this tip might actually become a lifesaver, so don't forget about it. What about gear? What gear should you be using to do decryption as soon as possible to finish in Elder Mode? Well, as we already saw, armor doesn't really matter because these enemies can deny 99% of your armor, so wear whatever you wish, really. But when it comes to weapons, you guys should really think about what you want to bring here because fooling around will get you killed, no doubt. I don't recommend you using melee weapons unless you're fighting the resilient melee mutation, as obvious, for the simple fact that you need way more time to get close to your target and that's extra time enemies have to hit you and take you down. Secondly, avoid close range weapons like shotguns because there are lots of ranged enemies and they stand their ground, they hardly come to you, which again forces you to get close to them and the clock is ticking, this mission requires a lot of running back and forth, so time is of the answers. Another type of weapon I don't recommend is no automatic ones, like a minigun or a gatling plasma, they take too long to fire, and trust me guys, that's enough time to die while you are trying to hit them. You don't want to go stealthy just to die because your weapon takes forever to shoot at your enemies. You don't want that to happen, <laughs> really, you don't. So, I recommend using automatic weapons of all kinds. Immediate long fire is what you need here, which enables a lot more versatility and a higher response time. The key goal is to kill enemies before they can shoot you, and that's only possible with automatic guns, such as a 50 call, a light machine gun, all sorts of rifles, Plasma casters are very strong too. There are plenty of choices, so make sure to choose well. Lastly, let me introduce you to the four new enemies Bethesda has introduced to the first Daily Ops expansion. There are three new bosses for the Scorched Mole Miners and Cultist factions. 
the fourth new enemy is the baby Mothman. Oh yes, it's the Mothman Hatchling, which appears through a daily ops encounter while fighting the cultist faction. If you wish to learn more about this cute, deadly creature, feel free to watch my other video, I'm leaving the link up there, where I share everything I discovered about it so far, such as his unique skills, defenses, behavior, and so much more. Anyway, as for the new bosses, there is a fairly strong one, a quiet meh mediocre one and a what the heck is that one that's the best descriptions i could come up with let's start with the mole miner juggernaut which is the meh one he looks similar to a treasure hunter and he does a fair amount of damage it has this effect where some sort of nukes explode around him but it's very easy to dodge as shown, just keep a distance and use objects to block his attacks if needed. He's a bullet sponge as most of the bosses, very tanky, but he's not that harmful. So he might survive your attacks for a while, but eventually he will die and that's a great thing, for you at least. The same can be said about the Scorch Exterminator, another super tanky enemy with a very peculiar weapon. He throws plasma grenades at you, well at least the animation is pretty much the same. His damage is a bit superior than the Juggernaut, maybe because his hits produce area of effect damage. So even though you're not directly hit, by his attacks you can still receive damage and die yeah just like it happened to me now if your team is bad position in an enclosed space you can all go down very quickly with just one attack so make sure to keep distance from one another if you don't want this to happen to you little did we know it was actually my first time fighting this boss and he's really good at taking down bloodied targets that's for sure. So watch out. I really feel like it's tank build era for daily ops at least because you can just stand there chilling against the enemies and the bosses too. And yeah, that's it. You, you don't really go down with full HP builds. Anyway, the last boss is the cultist prophet and his how should I say this? He doesn't do any damage guys. He's powerless. I mean, he's probably the tankiest boss of them but no damage, zero. I'm not sure if this is a bug or if it's actually intended, but his weapon looks weird, like the barrel is missing. Maybe that's why he cannot do any damage, but as they gave him a broken weapon, so how could he really? Ay ay ay. As such, there's nothing to worry about his boss, he's harmless, you can befriend him, take cinematics, make fun of him, whatever you want really. Have fun, I guess. Decryption might sound like a scary and overwhelming experience at first, but as all new things, with time and practice comes knowledge. And I hope these tips helped you understand the mission, how everything works, and most importantly, how to beat the challenge. I've done over 50 daily ops in the past weeks on the public test servers, just to be able to make a strategy guide like this one. So I really hope it helped you one way or the other. If you have any questions about decryption, which were not addressed in this video, feel free to ask in the comments below, I usually answer. Now, if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing so you don't miss anything and leave a comment below to let YouTube know that, well, you enjoyed it. And if you would like to become an enough survivor, make sure to check the links right below the video. As for me, I am Marta Branco and I will see you all in the next one. Until then, take care, adios, bye bye!